YouTube fam, my queen tribe, 80s culture out right here. I want to talk about every man that pursues you is not your husband. And that's one of the mistakes that a lot of women are making. That because a man pursue them, you know, as soon as the man pursue them, they immediately think about getting married. As soon as the man pursue them, they are immediately thinking about wedding bells. And that's where a lot of women going wrong at. And I'm going to do a video about, you know, idolizing marriage. And um, that's one of the mistakes that I've seen, you know, as a coach. Um, as a coach, um, being in the trenches, you know, I, I see a lot of things. I can see the mistakes that a lot of queens are making. And they they try to make a husband out of everybody that pursues them. And, you know, I want y'all to understand that just because a man pursues you doesn't mean that you have to choose this man, you have to pick this man. That's where women go wrong at. At the end of the day, a man is supposed to pursue you, but you supposed to do the choosing because you are the queen and you are the prize. God created you for a man to help this man and also to give this man favor. See, a man cannot have favor without you. You see what I'm saying? And, and in the back, the back is up. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, um, nine and nine, it says, "For the man to enjoy his wife, because she is his reward for his hard labor." You see what I'm saying? So your wife is is, is your reward. Um, and you know, I mean, not your wife. But you are your husband reward. Excuse me, your husband reward. You see what I'm saying? So, if you do, if you the reward, if you the favor, you the blessing that God created. Then can a man be a woman blessing too? Yeah, a man can be a woman blessing. But if if we really look at it biblically, the woman is the one that brings the man favor. So with that being said, is you have to choose the right man that you are going to bring favor see i'm gonna say this here you can't bring favor to a man that number one who tells you he doesn't want you or who he may not tell you this here but he's showing you he doesn't want you and man maybe he has pursued you you see what i'm saying he may pursue you but what y'all gotta realize every man that pursues you doesn't mean he's pursuing you for to be for y'all to be married, for you to be his wife. Men pursue women for different reasons, you know. Now, it could be when a man pursues you, he wants to marry you, but not every case. But, you know, so if if you're not with the right one, if you're not with the one that really wants you, you're not with the one that is for you, the one that really loves you, guess what? You're not going to bring that man favor. You see what I'm saying? If that man got the wrong motive. You're not going to bring that man favor. You're only going to bring the right man favor. The man that really wants you. The man that treats you like a queen. The man that treats you like a dime. You see what I'm saying? And I'm saying this right here. If you are in a relationship right now. And you're not being treated like a dime. Like a dime piece. If you're not being treated like a queen. You're in the wrong relationship. You're in the wrong relationship. And... The way a lot of women go wrong at, they just marry a man who's pursuing them. They call him a man, and he's pursuing them. But what is, what are his attention? Every man does does not have the attention of getting married. What are his attention? And you can ask him, he's not going to tell you the truth. No man going to tell you, I'm just here to waste your time. No man ain't going to tell you that I'm, I'm just, you know, just want to be with you. You know, a lot of times, you know, I, I heard women that teach about relationships, they say, you got to ask him his intention. And, and when I hear that, I'm saying to myself, he's not going to tell the truth. He's not going to tell the truth. You can ask him his intention all day long. He's not going to tell you he, he, he in your life to waste your time. He's going to lie to you. So you have to be able to use your discernment and discern his intention. And a lot of times, like I said before, me being a man, me dating women, me coaching women, me interacting with women. You know, I know a lot about women. 
You know, I don't know everything about women, but I, I know a lot about women, though. And one thing I do know that women catch on fast, and you know why? Because women have an intuition. Women have an intuition. Just something about a woman. She know when something ain't right. She may not know exactly what it is, and sometimes she may know what it is. But one thing about a woman, she know when something is not right. Why? Her woman intuition. You see what I'm saying? Her woman intuition. And that's a mistake a lot of women make it. They want to get married so bad till they overlook their intuition. And I have known so many women say this here. So women, so many women told me that when they got married and then when that marriage didn't work, the intuition was telling them don't do it. It was a certain woman um, that I know. I ain't gonna put too much information out there about her. But a certain woman that I know, and, and you know, and she was saying, you know, that her sister was telling her uh, when she got married, you know, before about, about her, her husband, her ex-husband, whatever, um, the wedding day, she felt not to do it. It was it was in her heart not to do it. But she did it anyways, and she ended up marrying a a man who does not work and hold a job down and she had to do work and pay all the bills and come home and you know he playing the video game with a big mixing bowl of cereal you see what i'm saying so you know every man that pursues you is not your husband every man that look handsome is not your husband and i'm telling you i know what i'm talking about i'm in the trenches some women a man can take him out on a date one date and they they head over heels for the man one day, they want to move in with the man. They want to give the man their body. And they're looking at, oh, he's so handsome. Oh, my God, he's so handsome. Oh, man, and the chemistry. Oh, I love the chemistry. The chemistry is so good. Girl, that's not that's not no chemistry. On the first date, what you're saying is his representative. And you think it's chemistry. Oh, my God, the chemistry is so good. Oh my God, he's everything I want on a man. Girl, that's his representative. That's not the real him. You see what I'm saying? Some women can go on one date with a man and they already want to marry the man. They already want to be his wife. They already want to start cooking, cleaning, having sex with the man, taking care of the man, and y'all want to be on one date. That's a mistake, you know, that a lot of women are making. In 2020, as soon as the man show interest in them, then they ready. They ready. Every man is not your husband. Every man is not the one that God has for you. Every man that come in your life is not the one for you. But some men come in your life to be a distraction. That the, the enemy could bring a man in your life to get you distracted, to get you out of the will of God. Uh, Y'all talking about this narcissist stuff like this right here. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, give these narcissists so much credit, overpraise these narcissists and narcissists this, narcissists that, you know. And, you know, like my man Tony said, you know, the average man in 2020 fit that, the signs that they say what narcissist is, the average man in 2020 fit that. You know what I'm saying? So every man that come in your life is not really a narcissist. You know, but what y'all got to realize is, you know, the reason why women fall for those type of men is because they want to get married. You know, ain't nothing wrong with, let me say this here, let me say this here, nothing wrong with wanting to get married. Nothing wrong with wanting to get married. You should want to get married and desire to get married, but marriage shouldn't be your main goal in life. You know, marriage shouldn't be your main goal and you should put all your worth all your eggs in being married. You know, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. And that's why a lot of women are getting with men who is not good for them. Getting with men who, you know, um, and, they, and they marry these men who does not, it's just not meant for them to be together. You see what I'm saying? Every man that comes in your life is not your husband. Every man that pursues you is not your husband. And I'm going to say this here, the same thing applies to the men in the church. Every man that puts you in the church, every man that have a title, don't, don't, don't think that that's your husband. 
Again, the devil can use a man of God, a, a so-called man of God. I'm going to say this, but not it can't be a real man of God. But the devil can use a so-called man of God to come in your life for a distraction. And it happens all the time. And you think because this man is a pastor, this man is a prophet, he's an apostle, and he's going to treat me right. I know he's going to treat me right. And then when you get with this man, you see the little red flags in the beginning, but you overlook it. You know, he's a pastor. And again, a lot of women are caught up with the idea of being married to a pastor, being married to a prophet. Some women in the church, um, they, they want that. And, you know, that, that's that's what they are attracted to. You know, like I, like I was saying before, you know, it's something about a preacher that can get in the pulpit and, and hoop. You know, and what I mean by hoop is, you know, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, be not dismayed. Whatever you need, time, God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yes. Ah, yeah. And the church shout. And women get impressed with Some women get impressed with that, right? Now, that same man pursues them. That same man pursues them. They are already, women are already, you are already in love. You are already, I mean, your nose wide open. Because this man know how to preach. This man know how to get the microphone and, and, and prophesy. Because half of them be prophesying. Um, in three days, you're going to be a millionaire. In three days... You're going you're gonna to get everything that you prayed for. In three days, God's going to change your finances. You're going to wake up one morning and you're going to be rich. Money going to start coming to you because you sold a seed of faith. Because you got in the $100 line and, and you sold a seed of $100. In three days, God's going to bless your 100 fold. Just be lying. Just be lying. And women, women, some women who are not even gullible, who wants to get married, who are infatuated with marriage in the church, they get turned on by that. And then that same prophet liar call her, come here, daughter. This is what goes on in the church. Y'all don't want to hear this here. And this is what messing women up. The same prophet liar, the same false prophet call a woman up. Because whenever a man or a woman prophesy and it's not true, they false prophet. They're a false prophet. You hear me? A real prophet. The Bible says prophet Samuel. Every word that he said came to pass. Everywhere he said, came, not, not one word fell to the ground. But you got these lying prophets. They'll see a pretty woman inside the, inside the congregation, inside the um, inside the church. And he's single. He's single, so he's looking for a wife. You know, he, he wants to get married. So when he said it's pretty gorgeous, beautiful, and 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 they can they can sense the naiveness and the gullibleness, yeah. They, they know when a woman is gullible and naive and pretty, though, gorgeous, and she want to hug them more than anything. She would love to be married to a pastor or a prophet. And so what he do, he pray on her. He calls her up. Uh, you with the blue dress on, come here. She goes up there with her blue dress on. Um, then he going to ask her, are you married? A real prophet, number one, that's a red flag right there because a real prophet knows when you married or when you're single. They know everything. You see what I'm saying? You remember when the woman was at the well? Um, and the, mom, the, the, um, the Samaritan woman at the well? Jesus told her, go get your husband. He already knows she ain't got no husband. She said, well, I'm not married. I don't have a husband. Jesus told her, you're right. Matter of fact, every man, you, know, you, you don't have five husbands. And the man that you are with now is not your husband. See, you see what I'm saying? Jesus told her everything about her past. That's a true prophet. He didn't. He, he didn't have to ask questions. You see what I'm saying? So when a man, when a, when a false prophet call you up to ask you, is you single? That's a red flag right there. He should already know. God would tell him already. She's single. Then the woman say, Well, you know, um, um, yes, I'm single. God said that, you know, I'm your husband. God said that me. You supposed to get married. I'm your husband. And guess what? Women, they fall for it because he's a pastor, he's a prophet, and they naive, they gullible, and they think that every, every time somebody's telling them that that's their husband, they go for it. 
They go for it. And like I tell y'all, when a man stop pursuing you, that go for the prophets and the pastors too. When a man stop pursuing you, that is not the time for you to get happy and let your guards down. That's the time for you to put on your spiritual eyes and start praying and seeking God, asking God for direction. God, is this the man for me? And God will let you know, no, he's not the man for you. He's a false prophet. So the false prophet tell these women, you know, I'm supposed to marry you. We're supposed to get married. And then they sit right here and, and marry the man. And guess what? They're going to see the red flag. They see the red flags. The false prophet, he may cheat on them during the relationship stage. And he, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I did wrong. And, and give me a second chance. And he'll blame the devil. Like they always do when they sin, the false prophets and the fake pastors and the, who don't have no integrity. Like the other one who, who keeps cheating on his wife and still got a tray full of members who expose his wife on um, on social media, talking about she don't cook. Y'all know what I'm talking about. People like him, they, they do wrong and they cheat and then they blame the devil for it like he did. The devil did this to me. The devil did this. And guess what? Women fall for it. The enemy made me do this here. The enemy is, 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 is you know, doing this to me. Or they'll come up with some excuse about when they was 16, like the other guy, you know, and they, they was broken and this and that and the other, what their mother did, what their daddy did. And this is why I am the way I am. B -b Baloney. Baloney. Because I don't care what your mama and your daddy did, in your past, when you are a man of integrity, when you are a man of God, and when you fear God, you're not going to cheat on your girlfriend. Y'all ain't going to hear this today. You're not going to cheat on your fiance. You're not going to cheat on your wife. I don't care about your mama and your daddy. God, when you are a man of God, you are a man of God. When you fear God, when you reverence God, trust me, you're not going to be cheating on your wife, your girlfriend, or your fiance. That's baloney. But they tell y'all about their childhood, and then guess what? You're a woman. You feel sorry for him, and you make excuses for him. You tell your friend, and your friend telling you, girl, I don't know about that, girl. Your friend telling you. Your intuition telling you now. Not only your friend, but your intuition telling you. And you sitting right here making excuses for this man. You know, uh, well, he had a he had a rough childhood. He, he got, you know, his, his daddy ain't did, did his daddy did that. He never had a father figure. His mama, this and that and the other. Yeah, okay. The same thing applies to a regular man, applies to a so-called prophet in the past or a preacher who got issues from his past. When he cheat and tell you, that's the reason why he cheat. That's the opportunity for you to tell him, well, you need to go get help. You need to go see a therapist and, you know, uh, get some therapy and get help. Um, so until you do that, you know, this is all. Um, I don't want to be a part of this here because, again, you're supposed to have integrity. You're supposed to be a man of integrity. And, and you're supposed to let him know, listen, you know. But, see, we was taught, oh, don't judge the pastor. Don't judge the prophet. And that's not true. And I showed y'all on my live I did the other night. Um, last night that in 1 Corinthians 5 and 9, the Bible tells us, 5 and 9 through 13, the Bible tells us, do not fellowship with a person who's supposed to be a Christian. That means he a prophet, evangelist, a bishop, or whoever, pastor. If they professing to be a leader or a Christian, the Bible tells us, do not eat with them. The Bible tells us to separate ourselves from them. The Bible tells us, that we're supposed to judge them. Hold them accountable and let them know, listen, you're a man of God. And if anything, I expect you to treat me like a queen. If the grown boys on the streets don't do it, if a regular man don't do it, if a regular Christian man don't do it, I expect you to treat you like treat me like a queen. You got to tell me the nice way. Don't be afraid. Stop being naive and gullible. Y'all got to get the backbone. Look at these people. Look at these men and tell them. And, and I'm telling you what I know as a woman, you're supposed to be the only, uh, every man I met, I never met a man that treated me like a queen. Every man I dated always did me wrong. Now I'm dating a pastor. Now I'm dating a prophet. 
you supposed to be the only man. My testimony should be you was the only man I ever met that treated me like a queen and you worse. Or you doing the same thing the grown boys did to me. You cheated on me and then now you saying something about how you was raised and how your mom and your daddy did. So if that's the case, then you need to go get therapy. Cause I'm not I'm not gonna be nobody therapy. That was a real that's a real queen. When a real queen could look into a man of God who ain't doing right, a man that don't have no integrity, when she can look into his face and be nice, she ain't cussing him out, she ain't yelling, she ain't in control of her emotions, that's a good, that's a strong, good queen, real queen there. Yeah. And she tell him like this right here, you know, go get your therapy. You know, because I'm not a, I'm not a therapy, you know, I'm a wife. I'm not a girlfriend, I'm a wife. And and I want a man that have integrity. And they tell me that you don't fear God and you don't have integrity. And listen, I don't want no parts of this right here. Because one thing I do know, God going to, if I get entangled with you, knowing that you doing wrong, knowing that you're a pastor and you cheating, having sex with other women, it, it made me just as bad as you in the, sight, in the sight of God. So God bless you, pastor. God bless you, brother. I'm out. If you go to his church, leave the church. Find another church. Don't sit up on nobody who's supposed to be a pastor and they having sex with other people when they were dating you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Every man that pursues you, even in the church, every man that say you you my wife, God say you my wife. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And don't let the church people put you with nobody. Don't let the church mothers or the church people, y'all need to get married. Let me tell y'all something, man, about some of these churches. Not all... It's a lot of corrupt leaders in this church, in these churches. And I have heard women who had an affair with a married pastor or had an affair with somebody in leadership up on a pastor. And they go to the pastor and the pastor <coughs> and the pastor tell them to abort their baby, to cover it up. Or uh, it was a situation where a lady got pregnant from somebody in ministry up on another pastor. A person that can prophesy and all the hill, well known in the church. And the pastor told her, either y'all get her up and get married or you abort your baby. Yeah, to cover this up. I'm telling you now, I, I know what I'm talking about. Some situations where even the pastor got another a woman pregnant. He pays her money to get an abortion. And some women will say, you know, I'm not going to abort my baby. And there are some women who had their baby. You see what I'm saying? And and I want to say this right here. If that ever happened to you or, you know, you ever if, if you ever do that, you make a, a bad decision and get pregnant from a pastor, whether he married or whatever situation it is, don't abort your baby. Don't abort your baby. Never abort your baby for nothing like that right there. Abortion is wrong. Don't abort your baby to cover up no cheating, lying pastor. Dishonest pastor, have your baby. Stop trying to protect the lying false prophets, pastors who are using women, who are taking advantage of women, using their, their authority, using their title to get women in the bedroom. To use their to they, they are abusing their influence to get women on their back. So ladies, listen to me. Every every man that pursues you, no matter if you're a pastor. Prophet, apostle, whatever. That don't mean he your husband. When the man stops pursuing you, that is your time for you to put on your spiritual eyes and seek God. The Bible say, lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He should direct your path. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to do it because you feel like he's a man of God or because, oh, he's handsome. We got chemistry and all this stuff here. He, everything I want in the man, I get that. that and nothing wrong with that. But you have to see God and be led by your spirit. That because a man say you his wife. That because a man who is a prophet say God say you put to marry me. And then when you dating this man, this man is controlling, uh, bruising you, cheating on you. Ask yourself this question. Would God send me a man in my life who's supposed to be a pastor, who's supposed to be a prophet? A man that's supposed to protect me spiritually, physically, and emotionally. A man that's supposed to lay his life down for me. 
You see what I'm saying? When you are dating a prophet and a pastor, he's supposed to lay his life. Any, any, any real man, I'm going to say this, any real man, but I'm holding the, the, the man in leadership more accountable than a regular man. When you're dating a man that's a prophet or a pastor, he's supposed to he's supposed to definitely make you feel safe and protected. And he's supposed to lay you he's supposed to lay his life down for you. You hear me? If you don't feel like this man is laying his life down for you, is protecting you and giving you the utmost respect and valuing you like a queen, it's not your husband. So that's that that's any man. That's not your husband. Hey, this is Coach Rod, God bless you, man. I'm just dropping like a heart. Everybody ain't gonna like it. When I say that, I mean the religious people. They're not gonna like it. I don't care. God called me to be different. I'm not like the average minister. I am a minister. I'm a coach. <laughs> you know, um, God called me to to, to to like to start coaching and to empowering. So I'm a coach, life coach, relationship coach, and this is what I do. And I thank God for how he's using me. But, you know, if you need some coaching, click on the link in the description box. Reach out to Coach Rod. Sit down with Coach Rod. Invest into yourself. I'm um, still, if you just want one session, that's good. You know, just pay the $40. But if you want the healing package, you know, four sessions for $80. Click on the link in the description box. Get with Coach Rod. Let me coach you. Let me help you heal. And, you know, once that way you can get back out there in the day in the arena and uh, make better decisions and better, better choices. Because a lot of you ladies are suffering from father wounds, things like that, things in your past. And that is the reason why some of you are choosing the wrong type of relationships. So let me help you out. Book, book a session, get that $80 special that I'm still running with Coach Rob. Hey, God bless y'all. My queen tribe, stay safe, be careful, and remember to keep the good love with you. And everything you say and do, we'll talk soon.